Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum coach and teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level, to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living. Today I'd like to talk about stress, as it is a very timely topic and an important issue affecting pretty much everyone on this planet. With the increasing external pressures in the world, wars, uncertain economy, and skyrocketing costs of living, to name just a few, stress has become an epidemic in its own right, insidiously embedding itself in our mind and body. Fear, anxiety, inability to cope with challenging situations and disconnection from spiritual guidance have a firm grip on our being, pointing to the boogeyman waiting for us in every corner. Due to its nature and impact, stress creates a vicious cycle detrimental to our health. More issues, more stress, which creates more issues, creating more stress, and so it goes. We must find a circuit breaker, or we won't live very long. Stress is an important part of our biology. It serves a purpose when we are faced with a life-threatening situation. The sympathetic nervous system kicks in, taking control of all body functions, preparing us to fight, flight, or freeze in a blink of an eye. Once the threat is gone, the parasympathetic system is activated, counteracting the effects of stress and restoring the body back to its normal state. When our stress response becomes frequent, almost regular to many false alarms, Situations that don't threaten our life in that very instant, the body doesn't have the time to recover from one stress response before the next one is triggered, and soon we develop chronic stress, which transforms from our key survival mechanism to an insidious, deadly, self-sabotaging machine. The title of this episode is not incidental, by the way. Stress can kill. Either quickly and directly, through a heart attack or stroke, or slowly and indirectly by affecting our organs and systems, creating illness, aging, and disease, all of which can lead to premature death. So let's have a look at the three main types of stress and their triggers. First, there is a physical stress, caused by injury, illness, infection, surgery, exhaustion, extreme temperatures, Sound, light and sun overexposure, lack of sleep, starvation, dehydration, poor oxygenation, obesity. Then there is chemical stress, caused by malnutrition, lack of essential vitamins and minerals, toxins from food, water and the environment, hormonal imbalance, drugs, both legal and illicit, alcohol, smoking, vaping, vaccinations, excessive acidity in the body. And finally, and most importantly, there is emotional stress, caused by negative thoughts and emotions, both expressed and bottled up. These main types of stress are closely related and intersect with each other, affecting our whole being. It is also worth noting that these stresses manifest at different levels. Physical stress is the easiest to spot and deal with. We know when we are injured, got hypothermia, or didn't get enough sleep. Chemical stress is less obvious, often developing over time, unless you got food poisoning or drug overdose and end up in hospital. 
Emotional stress is a double-edged sword, a coin you are playing the Russian roulette with, as you never know what the outcome will be. It creates both the physical and chemical stress, and so it is effectively a master stress. Put simply, emotional stress is your kryptonite. So let's focus on this one. I propose that there are three main categories of emotional stress linked to the passage of time. Firstly, worry, fear and anxiety about the future. Secondly, negative emotional attachments to the past, with guilt, shame, anger, blame, hatred, depression and grief. And finally, negative emotional reactions in the now, which show our inability to effectively deal with present situations, such as People pushing our ego buttons with traffic, conflicts, delays, undesired outcomes. Challenging situations with long-term effects arising unexpectedly in relation to health, family, relationships, finances or career. Short-term challenges such as overwhelm, pressure, deadlines and being stuck on the problem with no solution in sight. And finally, negative self-talk poor self-confidence, and self-esteem. These types of emotion include impatience, frustration, anger, rage, anxiety, worry, depression, self-deprecation, and fear. It is important to understand that, except for life-threatening situations when our nervous system is in charge, our emotional stress response to life is conditional, which means that we are in control. By changing the meaning of the triggers, we can stop those false alarms. So how can we keep emotional stress under control? Well, do not worry about the future. You don't know what will happen, so it's pointless. Do not dwell on your past negative experiences. The past is gone and you can't change it. You are wasting your time and energy. And to increase your stress resilience in face of the current challenges, I will give you five very useful hacks. 1. Take time out, which is my time, regularly. Meditate daily. Take a yoga class, listen to relaxing music, have a full body massage. Spend some time in nature. 2. Take care of any unresolved negative emotions and traumas. They produce a host of related emotional responses, including frustration, judgment, criticism, anger, anxiety and depression that ultimately lead to self-sabotage. Uncover and deal with any negative beliefs such as I am not loved, I am not good enough or I don't belong. As these create very sensitive buttons in your interface with the world waiting to be touched and triggered to finally explode. Seek professional help if needed. Talk to your doctor your coach or counselor. Life is not meant to be a struggle, and certainly not a lonely one. There is always a helping hand. 3. Adopt a positive, kind and accepting attitude towards life and people. Sadly, not everything will go your way, and not everyone is on the same page with you. Learn to live with it, as hard as it may be. Become oblivious to situations and people that tend to ruffle your feathers. If someone or something did not meet your expectations, so what? Your life still goes on. I can hear you say, easier said than done. (laughs) Well, yes, I know that. It's not easy. But I also know that it is possible to reduce our emotional reactions to such situations with practice, self-observation and self-discipline if that is our objective with the end game of reducing stress. 4. Breathe. Deeply and slowly. The more stressful the situation, the deeper and slower your breathing should be. Learn mindfulness and meditation. It's not rocket science. And 5. 
connect with your spiritual guidance. Listen to your intuition, meaning hear it, and then follow through and ask for help. Whether you are seeking professional guidance and support in getting through the challenges of life, or would like to better understand how life really works, why not consider one of my Quantum Living transformative programs? Quantum Shift, Healing Emotional Addictions, Healing Relationships, Finding Your Mojo, or Quantum Living Mentoring Program, my newest edition. They are all based on quantum science and metaphysics, my extensive coaching experience, quantum wisdom, energy healing, and psychic insights. Please visit quantumliving.com.au for more information and contact details. Let's have a chat how I could help you find what you are looking for. You'll be glad you did. Conflict and challenging situations do not induce stress. Our interpretation of them determines whether we respond or react. As the late Dr. Wayne Dyer said, when you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Orange juice, of course. And why does orange juice come out? Because it is there. When we respond to a situation, we choose what and how we say and do. Our critical mind is involved, and what we externalize goes through a number of internal filters. It is censored, if you like, by our logical mind. On the other hand, when we react, our feedback bypasses the critical mind and any filters we may have and comes out on a wave of emotions, uncensored. An emotional reaction is self-feeding too, and so our stress response can easily spiral out of control. Think of a road rage as a classic example. Someone cuts you off on a freeway, pushing the button of your precious ego, which takes it as an opportunity to vent your suppressed anger, blame, fear, and a host of other negative emotions in a blinding rage in which you could literally kill the offender for cutting you off on a freeway. So, what could you do instead in this situation? Catch yourself in the moment of the raising rage and stop the reaction. Take few deep breaths, focus on the traffic and safety on the road, and your response would be your thought, never mind, it's not worth it, life goes on, all is well. While short stress response is normal and necessary as a survival mechanism, keeping stress to the bare minimum is of paramount importance given its ill long-term effects on our mind and body. I call stress the final frontier. Why? Stress has been long recognized as a contributing factor in many health problems that people suffer from. I would like to radically expand on this view and propose that stress is the cause of all imbalance in the body. That's right. The very cause, direct or indirect, due to the impact on the body of stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol and others, secreted during stress and their flow-on effects afterwards. I recommend that if you have any health issues other than a physical injury, examine and closely monitor your stress levels for about four weeks or so and do everything you can to bring it down. You may be familiar with the colloquial phrase used to calm down an anxious person, don't fret, or stop fretting. Well, this is literally true. Stress hormones shorten the very important DNA protein structures called telomeres, found at both ends of each chromosome, protecting it from degradation, which determines the lifespan of the cell, hence our physical body. These telomeres are like the plastic ends on your shoelaces. Once they are gone, the shoelaces will fret and soon disintegrate. Finally, it is not a well-known fact that chronic stress creates an addiction to stress hormones in the body, which then craves those hormones, pushing us to create more stress, thus continuing the vicious cycle. Emotional addictions, including to stress, 
is a whole new subject I teach and help people with in my quantum coaching programs. This true case study will illustrate my point. Halfway through the program addressing her anxiety issues, my client admitted bravely. Now that my problems are gone and things have improved in my life, I worry, I really worry that I have nothing to worry about. (laughs) Needless to say, we knew what to focus on for the remainder of the program. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.